we're live now. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Maddie's <Hi>, Maddie. tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maddie. I'm sending a tweet about this show, and this is Insomniacs in the Morning. Yeah, welcome to our show. It's a uh, Friday morning after Thanksgiving. Uh, we yeah. both ate a lot of food, and it's Black Friday, which I guess, I mean, it's Black Friday really a thing now because like people start at like 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving. No, I know. So. Black Friday doesn't exist. But I mean, it does in the in the world of the internet, right? I mean, everybody, there's going to be a bunch of deals, deals, deals today. I thought that's a Monday. I think there's like a Cyber Monday deal, which is like I a separate thing. I already can promise you that there's at least one Black Friday deal that Probably. I personally will be taking advantage of. And that is a deal to order a bunch of posters for my band's album. Oh, okay. Today. Perfect. So there's at least one digital Black Friday deal. <laughs> I'm probably going to go out like after this. After, like my plan today is to do the show. Then I'm going to take Lara somewhere and then I'm going to go out into the world and see if I survive. I'm going to put on a tactical vest and then slay some oh, zombies. Are you guys going to a mall? Probably. I mean, it's me. I'm not scared. I used to <laughs> work at like a Black Friday. It's not as no, scary as everybody makes it out to be. It's just crowded. That's you just need coffee. Is. That's all you need. That's how I you deal with Black Friday. It's always like a really terrifying video that comes out that shows people like brawling in a mall, like as though <laughs> buying something. Those are always at like Walmart awesome or like Target or some other. Or like Macy's or like some box store. And it'll show people like almost dying. literally trampling each other That's, because it's so important to get a Furby. Or why people are scared of Black Friday is because there's always at least like one viral well, video. What didn't it this whole like Black Friday like like a thing has escalated since that time of the nineties when like there was that woman that died trying to get a Furby. Like that was a thing that happened. And then after that we were like we were like, maybe we should calm down. <laughs> as a yeah, so we'll calm it down by just cutting it to actual Thanksgiving. All right, I, yeah. where? How, why are we on this subject? I don't. <laughs> Nobody no. cares. Nobody's I'm gonna listen to this. Really tired. That's my excuse. I'm very tired too. I didn't sleep very well last night, so and well, it sounds like neither did you, which is great. Good job, I us. Didn't. Insomniacs in the morning, you guys. And I don't have any good reason. I got home from Thanksgiving at a pretty reasonable time. I got home at like nine thirty, which was nice because we had sort of an early Thanksgiving situation. I was I was home earlier than that, but yeah, we um, started. We started at like yeah. noon. Oh yeah, that's pretty typical. We we had meal time at five, but um, I left here at like three, which I wasn't expecting to do. So I had to finish making this pie really, really quickly. So the entirety of yesterday, which was my day off, felt like a work day because I was like rushing around. And then I was like, why did I spend my day off doing this? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say you at least have today off, but that's not true. Nope. So I'm back to work today. So. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I probably should check day. in on like the one job I have also. So mm -hmm. see if you have to do some chores before you go and hit up the malls. That's yeah. cool though. I'm jealous that you don't have to work today. I realize that you would probably prefer to work more hours, but I'm very jealous yeah, because I'm for anybody that's listening so to this, as much as I enjoy being a photographer and an artist, I am looking for more stable work all of a sudden. So I was like Yeah. If anybody it turns out being a starving artist is not a fun way to go. Hire Ryan as a photographer or videographer. Or just hire me and I'll like folks. run your office. Yeah. Or as like a part time <laughs> anything. Yeah. I can do anything. I can move boxes. <laughs> Please let him know. Sorry. I mean, it's the, I'm, I'm in a very weird place in my life right now, where, which we're not going to really talk about on the show no. because nobody's really going to care about it. But like you can tell because there's. We all talk about shit our personal me. lives, but only in so far as I'm just going through a lot of huge life changes right now, and I need money. Anymore. So yeah, I know. So anyway, Ryan needs money. So can people send him money? Thanks. Bye. Yeah, we'll um, start like a, a like a Patreon for Ryan needs like some money, please. Ryan. <laughs> you guys send to the Patreon. I'll stand here and look show, pretty. I'll wiggle my that. eyebrows a lot. See if anybody gets into that. Um, um so okay. you're playing Mario Maker? <laughs> I am because I have no money. And I had like a whole bunch of like store credit for like uh, this uh, used game store. So obviously I can't get the new Pokemon game, which we released this past week and everybody's playing it and posting pictures on Twitter. So similar to X and Y, I'll pick it up once when nobody's playing it anymore. Um, and I'll be like posting things that's not relevant anymore. But, you know, something came too, out yes. and I'm I, Caro just posted a picture of what is a Pokemon that's, I guess, like a haunted sandcastle. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, I was like, I was a little jealous about that. But since I can't do that, I finally picked up Mario Maker so Steph and I could play it. And uh, the two of us have been 
enjoying that a lot because like we just try and screw each other over so i finally understand like i didn't want to give into the mario maker thing i just did not want to do it uh because why not it's actually pretty fun i thought it was going to be stupid but then like it's not really about like making the levels for yourself it's about like the other people you're playing the game with and who yes. you're going to be yeah i I'm, like i didn't really understand that it it's not a game that stands up like on its own, I guess it could because you can play like the one player modes and do like the yeah. hundred man Mario's. Um, some of the other levels are really stupid. Yeah, so but like that. I liked making levels to fuck around with stuff and vice versa. And I think that is the appeal to me of that game. That was um, what I enjoyed about it, too. Um, yeah, I, I would like invite people over and we would all make a level together. That was yeah. like- and it's, That's a, the a idea really of it. So it's like it Super Smash hours. Brothers, where it's like, you know, Smash Brothers is great by itself, but like, it's better when you're playing it with a group of people that are all screaming. Yes, or like, you know, you make a, a level that like represents some personal joke that you have or, yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it may be, and it's fun. Or you make a stupid level and then you watch your friends try to play it and get really mad at you. That's fun too. Well, Steph was, uh, <laughs> she was creating levels where like she was putting hidden boxes everywhere that like dispelled ghosts and then I would like bounce off this hidden block. A ghost would come after me. I just fall in lava. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Steph seems like she'd be the master of the troll level. Yeah, she was. It took me a really long time to play one her last one that she made for me. So that was great. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm finally into it. I'm finally playing a game that everybody else played like roughly one year ago, which is usually what happens. The price has not really come down on it, so I guess like it is a yeah, fairly popular game. It never really happens. I so. also picked up both Bayonetta's because I had they had that in, which I haven't started playing yet. But like, I know you're a Devil May Cry fan, so I've been telling you for years that you'll probably dig Bayonetta. I know, and plus, like you, Todd and Gita have high regard for it. So it's very fun from an aesthetic perspective, but also like the actual gameplay. I think you would enjoy just based on the other games. The I fact that I like Devil May Cry, yeah. yeah. Although they don't have Dante, it's like it's a sexy lady this time. But and I, I like there's, Devil May Cry because like, Dante was also the sexy man. I mean, he literally wasn't wearing a shirt. The game. There's like the weird little short dude, little short mafia mobster guy. <laughs> but there's also like some other dudes in the game. So don't don't worry, worry they're all naked. It's like Resident <laughs> Evil. It's like equal opportunity. Um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so the other thing is that uh, this you is big news. Uninstalled. It says in the document, and I already am spoiling it because I'm shocked. <laughs> uninstalled Pokemon Go. I'm so mad at that game right now, and I have what been happened? for like a month. Well, okay, because... well, everyone is annoyed at this game, so I'm with you on this. Oh, so basically, like, there's. Where I was are just even talking start? to Mary okay. Ellen about this. So Pokemon like, Go how... was a great game when it first came out because it made people go outside. It made people like meet people within their own community and neighborhood and made it people, you walk around, people like it had a lot of great aspects um and once when people stop playing it quite as frequently like it's not a game that stands up on its own number one so you take that away and you have to deal with like the shittiness of the game and for whatever reason in the last few updates it's made it like i'll stand in front of like a pokestop mm -hmm. and i'll click it and i'll be like try again later so i have to stand there like for a full minute before it registers and it's like I, like, that's not why I'm playing this game. Like, I want to keep on going from place to place, not standing and waiting for the game to, like, catch up. Um, and I've also been, like, throwing Pokeballs at Pokemon that just don't even hit them at all anymore. So now yeah. it's, like, set up so, like, you have to waste 10 balls. And I'm like, I'm not investing money in this game. I will invest money in this game if it's, like, sold to me. Like, you know, like, you can buy an app that's, like, mm -hmm. a full game. Like, you know, yeah, like, 10 bucks works. for the apps. But this yeah. is like microtransaction stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I and I and like you could still have the microtransaction stuff in there after you pay the 10 bucks for a game that works because people really like I know like, you know, Katie, yeah, for example, it, will still buy Pokeballs if she's not near a Pokestop. Um, so it's just stupid. Like and you, the fact that it just it is now designed in such a way that it's unplayable. It's like I'm not even like running into other Pokemon players anymore because nobody's out playing the game like oh, yeah. we used to. I never see other Pokemon players. But yeah, I didn't and... really a ton almost like a week after it came out, everybody right. was gone. And also like I'm I'm still annoyed that they never integrated a like or not not even integrated yet because I understand it would take a lot of time in terms of programming, but like they never opened up a thing where people could register like new sites to be Pokestops that would be like memorials yeah. and stuff. They never did that. And so like there's a lot of people that, that just can't play the game. And like 
I'm technically not one of those people because like where I live, I could easily get somewhere if I drive, but like, you know, like in Connecticut, like there's vast wastelands of nothing, but I definitely, since I hike and stuff, I know where like everything is. And like, these aren't Pokestops, but they could be. And it would also make the game like playable for somebody like me. That's like, the, lives in a have place to drive into the city. Else. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, whenever I came up to Boston it's like, obviously like they were f- fucking everywhere. So all my friends who were in New York and Boston were like, Oh, this is a great game. Cause we just keep on playing it. Also, this is a fun fact, but every single time I go running, it tells me I'm ru- I'm going too fast. And I'm like, yep. I'm not even fucking driving right now. Like, this is bullshit. Yeah. So, like, I'm just, I'm tired of the game. I'm tired of it not working. And I've been thinking I'm, about I'm, uninstalling yeah. it for, like, a month now. And I finally did it. I was like, you know, they need to fix some major bugs with this game. And they they should probably offer, like, a paid version of the game. You know what I, I mean? I don't know what that would even be like. I mean, I think the problem that you're kind of getting at, that we got at even when the game first came out, is that there's really just not that much to it. Like, there never was that much to it. And at this point, my problem with it, I actually haven't struggled with the stuff that you struggled with, maybe because I, I'm not all the way up to date on the game updates, which yeah. I should be. It, maybe it'll break my game. Um, <laughs> but... I, I'm still able to like catch Pidgeys and I'm still able to swipe Pokestops, except that like the problem now is I just keep forgetting to open it because I don't care. Yeah. So I keep like going for walks and then like while I'm on my way home, I'm like, oh, I could have been like logging steps in Pokemon this whole time. But then I mm-hmm. like realize I also don't care, which is not great because like the entire game is that. Like if well, I'm not I mean- logging steps then it doesn't matter and also you have to have the game open in order for that to work and right like, which is fucking that's bullshit. really stupid because just... my fitbit doesn't make me do that so i know there's a way for the game to like register steps in a more logical mm. way and yeah like, i really wish that that aspect of it was improved because it's, i mean it's i it's would happily not... just use the game as a pedometer like i have a fitbit like i understand how these things work like i'm used to it but I just, I don't know. It's disappointing to me because, like, having a Pokemon themed pedometer alone would have been kind of fun. It, but, like, that was something I would get into also. And, like, I know they just want you to, like, play the game or whatever, but, like. But I don't care. It, like, the, there is no game. I, like, I'll be listening to Spotify or whatever, and, like, I turn on Pokemon Go, it just stops every other app. I know. And I have and to, like, go through, and you can, you can run them at the same time, but it's, like, after the yeah. game loads, and it's, like. This is a new Fuck. thing they did implement is that now it makes uh, my podcast or music softer every time I open the game. And it didn't used to do that. It used oh, to yeah. keep everything the same volume. But now it makes it significantly softer. And I'm like, if I'm going for a run, I want my music to be like pumping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's how I feel about that, too. Whenever I'm out hiking, I want to be listening to music that I want to be listening to. Like, I don't. It just want to be me. waiting on like, Pokemon I, Go. Like I haven't uninstalled it yet, but at this point, I really don't know why because the game is offering me nothing. No, exactly, and that's how I felt about it too. And once when I was throwing like ten balls at a Pidgey, that's like not even level sixty. I'm like, this is fucked up. Like, yeah. I'm kind of sad not... that I haven't gotten more Pokemon that I wanted though. So I, I know, and a lot of our friends like hit them. like. Lo- the highest level they could go and like you know i know carol and katie like were really great at it but i think well katie's at the top um katie is at the top now she has the watch (laughs) um i think i think even carol and mary ellen who were like continuing to play it for a while like i was just talking to mary ellen this week about this exact problem where she was playing pokemon while i was driving her to and from our podcast and she was like playing it and she was like I don't know why I'm still doing this. <laughs> she was like having a little existential crisis like, while <laughs> playing the game. And I was like, I'm with you, Mary Ellen. Like, I also feel that way every time I open that app. <laughs> no, every well, time I open it, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Why is this open? Why am I doing this? Like, yeah, you know what? Honestly, what you need to do is just uninstall it is my recommendation for everyone. Well, I'll I'm like, I'm just, just so like bitter about it right there. now. So no, I get it. I get it. I get it. All right. And so everybody is sad about Pokemon Go and wants to play the new Pokemon game. That's right. I was going to say, it doesn't matter though, because you can go play Pokemon Sun and Moon, which everybody is saying is fucking great. So that's that good. instead it costs money, but like, you'll probably have more fun of an experience Yeah, <laughs> because I mean like, like an actual game. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So do you want to tell me about this Thanksgiving workout that you designed? Um, I actually looked it up, but yes, uh, and I'm not, I haven't done it yet. I was going to do it before I started. I'm going to want to get back, but basically you're just doing an eight minute workout and you just do 
like one minute per all these things. So for you do like a minute of squats, then push ups, then forward lunges, then like they they like recommended a certain kind of barbell row, but just do whatever you want with the way it's yeah, like rows it's just are like this thing. Yeah. Right? Like pulling an arrow, but with a weight. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Or like for me, I just like curling. So you could do barbell curls the uh, and then do straight up with like you just, just do some kind of variation with the weights. Uh, for me, I'm doing like a, a curl, a straight up one, and then like the tricep one you told me and just oh, do that for a minute. Right. Yeah. And then do a wall sit and a chair push up and yeah, you just keep on doing sits. it for a minute. And then Doing like a take wall sit for a minute is like intense. Have you ever and I also <laughs> you start like sitting there, you're like, oh my god. I, I don't <laughs> have that issue. I think my core it's because you it's because you work out all the time. No, I think it's because my core is pretty solid, so like it's easier for me to hold myself up. Um that's not the part of me that gets sore, it's just my thighs that get sore. They start Oh shaking. no, I I don't have that issue, but I also hike a lot, so that probably yeah. might be the real reason. I'm very jealous of how in shape you are. I'm I not that in shape right now. I my job actually. and work out constantly. No, 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 no. I like. I'm definitely <laughs> not in shape right now. Sit my my. Sit for longer than me, so you're in. Better shape <laughs> you know? Well, true, but like, right? You know, these past couple of months, especially since vacation, I've not been eating well or anything like that. So I'm like, but that's um, not, that not working out quite as much. You're still working out as much as you used to. No, I I actually tone that down too. So, but anyway, so my point being is that like I I said to myself earlier this week, I'm like after Thanksgiving is over, I'm gonna sort of put myself back on track and I'm going to like cut back on drinking and stuff like that. So that's good. That's cheers. A good idea. I know. Like I, I mean, it sugar in it. So that'll make you feel tired. I, but, well, um, and we're also going to the Christmas season. I sort of want some sort of like layout in terms of like my diet and stuff, because otherwise I'm just going to eat Christmas cookies nonstop. And so I need to sort of understand when it is the right time to eat Christmas cookies and chug eggnog. You know what I mean? So I do know what you mean. And I also know that if you're like, you know, going through some hard life stuff, it's definitely easy to be like, I'll just consume all the sugar I see. It's yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I'm going through some tough life stuff. And well, I really Ryan, my recommendation for you would to be forgiving of yourself in this in a time like that. It, you're like, you're like, starve yourself. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Please don't. Um, yeah, my workout tip is to be forgiving of yourself. Um, so this week, is I actually didn't like get to work out at all. And Thanksgiving? I'm really mad about it. I had one thing I really wanted to do yesterday in my day off, which was work out. And I didn't get to do that because I planned the timing of making that pie all wrong. And that's the it worst. Was stupid. So I didn't get to work out and I was really grumpy about it. And then I got home at 930 and I was lying on the couch, still wearing my coat, completely exhausted. And I was like, I could work out now. And then I was like, Maddie, what's wrong with you? No, go to bed. Go I know. Bed. I, I feel that because I was doing the same thing on Wednesday. I was making pasta salad until like 1030 at night because I had it's to do just... like this. It was too much this week. This week was just too much. And I was telling you, like, I had to like plan ahead so that I could even take a day off. I had to like organize everything. I put out the Mary Ellen's and my podcast a day early. So I stayed up really late editing that on Tuesday. It was so dumb. Everything <laughs> was stupid. And so I was the, mad the, we had a great myself conversation about that for not working out this week. And so my workout tip is to be more forgiving of yourself, especially when it's a holiday, because shit is going to be crazy schedule wise. So I, I didn't work out at all. I think and that's it's okay. just easy to get into like that pattern of being like, okay, so I have like, like, you know, when Christmas rolls around, you're like, okay, so I'm going to make sure I make time to work out while I'm visiting family. But then you end up relaxing, but then you feel guilty. Well, and it's like... you end up getting roped into different family commitments. Yeah, exactly. like, we're all going to the zoo. Please come. And you're like, I don't want to be an asshole. Like, I'm going to go. Yeah. You know, like, shit happens. So Pretty much. Just do what you can. Anyway, well, so I'll try to work out today, but I might not get to. And that's okay, because I have another family dinner tonight that I have to go to right after right. work. Because there's... I love, I love our two workout tips. Mine is like this intense workout and yours is like, no, I might actually do yours because it's only eight minutes. So well, that's, that's the, that's great. the point It's because a lot of people are going to be too hunt over to do more than eight minutes. Or they're going to be like me and they're going to have so many family commitments that they literally don't have time to do anything that's longer than eight minutes. Either of those reasons is acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll post, we'll post the workout into the thing afterwards. Yeah. All right. All right um, cool. Let's hop into pop culture news. But first, I wanted to tell anybody that's actually listening. Uh, we were posting this before, but today's question, if you want to email us at insomniacs in the morning at gmail.com, is to tell us about your favorite handheld game from when you were a child. 
I wrote the 90s initially because I was like, that's when I was a kid, like the 80s and 90s. But then I was like, wait, hold on. We probably have listeners that are like that were born after 2000 and did not experience that at all. So well, like, like I know. <laughs> and, and if you want to ask us any other question or tell us about your favorite Thanksgiving food, you can email us and tell mm-hmm. us about that as well. Like, we'll, we'll read your emails. It. Don't worry about it. Well, we, we read every email that comes in, which is a little crazy, but we still do it and we love it. We do it. We so. don't have enough listeners that we don't do that. Maybe someday we will, <laughs> but for the moment we read all of your emails. So this is a great show to write into. Right. Right. All right. So um, pop culture news. So uh, this launched Are like in the middle of last chat, night. By the way, nobody's nobody's in the chat, right? Are we? No, that? I've got I've got the chat. Okay. Um, but la- this launched last night. Uh, Gilmore Girls. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't. I haven't seen either. That. I, oh, I'm so excited for it, but I'm so busy with family bullshit that I, I just haven't had time to watch like, it. Yeah, I know. Like, By bullshit, I mean, it's great. I love my family. <laughs> like, no more girls. <laughs> but a lot of people like marathoned it overnight last night. I saw that happening. Oh uh, so I don't have anything to say about it. I, but I am letting people know oh, because I didn't know it launched last night. And I think a lot of people don't actually know. They just know that it was supposed to be going up after Thanksgiving at some point, but it's on there now. You can go watch it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to just mysteriously call in sick to work in the next 20 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. They're going to like listen to this podcast and be like, gee, I wonder where Maddie went. (laughs) No, I won't do that. I'll work a normal day and then have a family dinner and then. (laughs) Um, No, I don't know. I'll, I'll find time to watch it tomorrow with band practice. So I don't know. I'm too busy, man. And you get girls, a, I miss you. I just, I always play shit in the background because it's the only way I get to watch anything. So, well, I'm pretty psyched about this because as you know, and as longtime listeners of the show know, I've, re- I have successfully rewatched all seven seasons of Gilmore Girls. I, I know that's, that was like intense. Last week I watched all of them. I did it. I got through them all in time. And so I'm completely ready to watch this i'm i prepared this was like a months long preparation basically i heard about the revival and i was like i gotta watch gilmore girls i gotta start now and that's what i've been doing in my free time so it's been pretty fun that sounds fun it was fun um that was what i was doing while i was like doing chores and washing dishes and living my life for the past so this is this is how you gotta watch months. the new season like this is what i'm saying i'm like you always gotta keep shit playing in the background i understand you have to, you're a writer so like you I can't, really can't listen to anything it in the background of other things that I do like cleaning yeah. and cooking and exactly. dishes and shit like that. I, I watch TV while doing those things. And that's why I always have subtitles on because then if the sink is too loud, you can, dishes, I, I can never thought about it. that. That is smart. Yeah, Cause I, I, really got a system I cannot, I like sometimes I can't hear it at all. So that yeah. was, that's a good call. Put subtitles. on subtitles. Mm-hmm. Um, Whenever Carol comes over, she's like, "Why are the subtitles always on?" We're like when we're watching something, and <laughs> Katie I'm like, does the same thing though. She like leaves the subtitles on all the time, and everyone's like, "Why do you leave those on?" She's like, uh, "I like being the on." Like I just have them on all the time. You're anyway, like Katie. Katie like only she puts them on. She's like, "Oh, well, like that's the extent of reading I do every week because I don't read anything else." <laughs> God, I got to read more. All right, so let's talk about this. I'm making you talk about this. Okay. Ryan saw the extended cut of Suicide Squad. It was also the first time I'd ever seen Suicide Suicide Squad. I saw Suicide Squad in the theater with Mary Ellen, which sadly was before we had a movie podcast or else we could have recorded an episode about it. You can still do it. It's not too late. Uh, I don't know if we want to talk about that movie ever again. So the theatrical release of Suicide Squad is is really bad there's not enough information in it it doesn't really make as much sense but i actually have heard that that the version that ryan saw is a little better and so ryan and i had like a very confusing conversation (laughs) where he was like you know jared leto's version of the joker wasn't very good but i actually really liked all those scenes with him and harley and i was like ryan what the fuck are you talking about (laughs) There's no, there's barely any scenes with him and Margot Robbie. Like, I love Margot Robbie. I wanted there to be more scenes with Margot Robbie's Harley (laughs) Quinn. They weren't in there. And you were like, there were like 11 minutes worth of those scenes, Maddie. And I was like, am I losing my mind? Is Ryan losing his mind? But that's the extra thing that's in there. So I would love to hear about these scenes. Um, I see the thing is that I didn't see whatever the theatrical release was. So I don't know. None of those were there. because Yeah, I mean, the version I saw, like, okay, so here's my opinion on Suicide Squad. I didn't hate it. Uh, probably because I saw this extended version. Yeah, it probably um, made more sense. <laughs> but I, <coughs> excuse me, 
Yeah. So Suicide Squad from like a filmographer's perspective, actually like the first half of it is really beautiful and really sort of like witty and great. And the second half is just not that at all. It's like a I different know. directorial it choice. Going way off the rails. Once it really does. And like, and it's, stuff. it's too bad because I found a lot of the cinematography really beautiful and transitions really great. Like when, for example, when they're talking about killer croc being a monster at like, they're, you know, like he's like, they have he to eats. introduce a lot of characters really fast. I don't know. See, I don't know how much they actually included in the oh, original yeah. version. Yeah, but like, know. like there was like the whole background of Killer Croc and like they go, oh, he's a monster. And then it cuts to Amanda Waller, like eating her steak really slowly. And I thought that was a great transition. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, I didn't hate it. And it, um, Jared, has it Leto, 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 Light Bright, like Leto? Leto. Leto. Uh, I don't like him as the Joker, but I liked no. the direction of that character and how they wrote him into the script. See, this is why it's so sad. I feel like the failure of this movie like, if they had had a better Joker, this would have been such a different movie. And I feel bad shitting on Jared Leto this much. I don't feel that bad because he's apparently, <laughs> like, a shitty person in real life. But, like, oh, good. I don't like shitting on people's acting. I don't. I don't enjoy it. But I but I do feel like a different Joker could have made this movie very different. I agree. You know? And I it's think like... that, like, over the course of the making of the movie, Jared Leto was, like, apparently, like, a huge dick to his castmates. And I think that probably affected the way that they filmed certain scenes. Probably. Probably changed the way they edited the movie. You uh, probably. Know? Well, the, I, I had found this out, but apparently they edited the movie entirely and then they wanted to be more like the trailer. So they handed it back to the people who directed the trailer and then re-edited the entire movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. This is like Super Mario Brothers level nightmare of it's a movie. It's more like death by committee, which is happening yeah. to a lot of DC stuff, it seems, where it's like, we want to make sure everyone likes it, so let's create something that no one likes. Which is like, <laughs> okay. So we can all agree on that together. Yeah, and like, I do think that like, the first half of the movie is really goofy. There's like a lot of MySpace fonts and shit. And like, actually, I don't, I, I mean, it's very silly, but like, I don't mind a really campy movie. I yeah. don't mind that. That's completely fine with me. Um, like, I watched Repo the Genetic Opera over and over for years. So like, that's that's the standard i'm coming into this kind of movie with. <laughs> we also um, made demon i will all, well yes but i mean like i'm willing to watch a movie that's like of that level right <laughs> um but that wasn't really the problem that i had with this movie it was more like chemistry stuff like i felt like harley and the joker need to have a chemistry like you need to understand why they're in an abusive relationship or else you don't get it you're like why are they together so you this know? is my question for you is that like i felt like there was a lot of that in the extended version that i saw yeah, which is sad that i didn't get to see it well so like i mean did you even see like was there a scene included where like harley rides up on a motorcycle no okay all right so there's like <laughs> there's <laughs> there's like a lot of scenes with the two of them um I, I'm sure they kept this in in the original one, like Batman's attacking them and she's screaming, it's date night. And she's like shooting the gun at yes, the. But even that was like very, very quick cuts. There was oh, really, yeah, it was really a short scene. That's interesting. And like, that's actually one of my favorite parts of it. Cause that was so Harley is that she's like, you're ruining date night. And she's like, yeah, shooting bullets in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, but, but even they, that went by that. so fast. I feel like, in the in the larger context of the movie that felt like it went by really fast. I see now i don't did they keep all the stuff where they shocked her in the brain or he shocked her in the brain um not really so so here's what i remember them keeping in and bear in mind that i watched this in the theater like a few months ago i remember they kept that scene in and mostly that scene focused on batman and harley quinn and i think the editors were like margot robbie's amazing let's keep in her moments so yeah i remember they kept that in. They kept in like Batman giving her mouth to mouth and stuff and like them hitting each other. Yeah. Um, they kept that stuff in. I don't really remember Jared Leto doing anything in that car chase scene. I think he might have had one line. I don't know. Well, I'm talking was. about later when like yeah, she's in no, the I'm hospital. I'm just telling you that's one of the only Harley Quinn Joker scenes. And then the other scene that they had from them together was a flashback. Well, they had a couple flashbacks. One of them is in the nightclub where she's dancing in the cage. Yeah, they, they um, kept that. They kept that. And then one of them is the only flashback that you get to the sort of mad love storyline that we all know of Joker and Harley. They show them sitting at the table and she's in her doctor's coat. She's Harley and Quinzel still. Um, and she's psychoanalyzing him. They kept like one line from that where she like says one line to him about him being crazy or whatever. And then it quick cuts to a voiceover over it being like, 
you know, that's that's the story of Harley and Joker. And <laughs> she totally goes crazy and like somebody's narrating it and I don't remember who. It's probably Mario Okay, well, Mario. so there's more on that. They're, they have and then a- he throws her into the tank and then takes her out. And there's another well, line from her where she looks at him and she's like, now I'm Harley or whatever. And then it goes back to the movie. Oh, okay, so like some of that was in there, <laughs> but like there was like, all these other extended scenes uh, in terms of like, they had this whole thing where he kind of like tortures her, but she's all like, I can I take it. I might've been in there. I think that okay. was in there, but it was really later, bad. Later on though, they have like the other flashbacks, like one where she rides up on a motorcycle and he's like driving down the highway and she makes him stop. And she's like, I've done everything for you. And she's like, when are you going to accept that I love you and this and that? Oh. And like, and he's like, oh, can somebody get this bitch out of my way? And like, she's like, She's like, I've done everything you asked, and you like, I, what else? I need to prove myself to you, and all this stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then, That's like, not had, in there. <laughs> okay, so there's also another scene where you know she gets thrown into ta- the tank. There's like a like a whole five minute scene of that of them like going back and forth, and then her dropping in, and then like she doesn't come up, and he's like, shit, I gotta save her. So then he jumps in after her. That, but I didn't care about it because I was like, I don't know who they are, and I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I just in general there to me there was a lot of Harley Quinn in this movie and I think that's what the extended cut is it's just like more of Margaret Robbie running that around doing helps, stuff. Helps it does so and I think I've read I that loved like everything that they did have of yeah, her. Yeah, they, they said that um it was a lot of stuff with her and Joker and then also like a lot of stuff of Deadshot that was added in. I liked um, I liked Will Smith a lot in this movie. I did. I so honestly I, think I liked, probably would have helped too. I liked all everybody in the Suicide Squad, like in terms of like the characters, except for Inferno Face. I don't know who he, who yeah, he, he was I don't good. know who he was, like I didn't but, like that Australian guy because I didn't like care who he was in the movie. I but was you, like, I actually guy? did and I thought Captain Boomerang was great because he was well, like you probably know who he is in the comics. So yeah, because like, he's a flash him. villain. So I don't really care. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the extended version is a little bit better because they like um, don't edit it out as shittily, and like you sort of get to see more I behind these characters. What happened if that version had come out in theaters? I Probably mean, a lot of people, people went to see Suicide Squad regardless. That's true, and honestly, Margot Robbie sells Harley so well in the movie that like you can sort of get by on how unbearable parts of it is because like she's there. And yeah, and as you can tell that she like she took time to like actually watch the animated series because the way she moves is like how Harley moved in like the old '90s TV show. Mm-hmm. So like, my opinion was like you know like I I enjoyed it. I would watch it again. Um, the second I'm, half of that movie I is like see myself drunkenly watching the extended cut at some point in my life. I think um, I, I mean I hang on to like how great Margot Robbie is, honestly. <laughs> so she is still on track to make a solo Harley Quinn movie, by the way. She's good. still doing it. Good. That has been like moving along. They found a screenwriter. Um, it's a female screenwriter, the same woman who wrote that horror movie that's coming out that's called Shut In. I don't know if I don't know anything about that. Um, it's a horror movie about like a woman whose son dies and she like loses her mind. Um, oh, it looks pretty spooky. Uh, but it, it's just cool that they're like hiring, you know, a woman and also like a woman who's experienced with like horror and like campy movies. So I'm kind of excited to see where they go with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm mostly just glad it's happening. Cause I think it's cool that they're going to make a solo Harley Quinn movie. I agree. And I wish I could say more on the extended cut, but it's really hard for me to make that comparison because I never saw it in theaters. So I don't know what the theatrical cut is actually like. Yeah. And also like, even at the time I was kind of like Suicide Squad, even when it's bad, it's kind of like funny. So I sort of recommended it from a so bad it's good standpoint, even at the time, because I was like, you know, it's still the characters. That well, you I know. definitely thought afterwards, I'm like, this is way better than Batman v Superman, at least. So that's yeah, like a step in the right direction. Was. I haven't seen Batman v Superman. You don't need to. I like the only part that I even liked was Wonder Woman jumping up and slaying that dude at the end. So that was it. That was the only part I liked. The trailer is the part where she was like holding her shield and stuff. And like yeah, you know, that's all you need. We'll just see the Wonder Woman movie when it comes out. Oh, I can't wait. All, all right, right. So talk talk about this Fox thing because I hadn't heard anything about it, but it sounds like Marvel. Well, it doesn't and seem Fox like it's still completely fighting. new, but um, last week. Well, last week on this show, we talked about Inhumans for a while. And I and, got pissed. And, and Ryan got pissed, rightfully so, in my opinion, about the fact that, that Marvel and Fox can't seem to get it together on the X-Men rights. And it's really too bad, and it's changing things in, in weird ways, and it's continuing to change things in weird ways. Um, and so this week at a press conference, somebody asked Kevin Feige about that and was like, hey, have you ever considered like sort of renting the rights the way that 
happened with Spider-Man, like maybe there could be some sort of agreement that gets made on the X-Men rights where like right. sometimes... Which is what we all hope for. And Kevin Feige was just like, nope, <laughs> that's not happening. So as far as I can tell, like somebody on one or the other side just is refusing to let this happen or both sides are because every time someone asks, the answer is always no. Unless it's just the thing that they can't say anything at all. Maybe. But I don't know. I mean, but we're getting like a pretty hard no. So I, I don't like. I just. I, it sucks. Right now. It's, it sucks. It sucks for us because, like, the Avengers are great and all, but we're here for the X Men, and like, I know they're just and getting also, so. Like the X Men are just changing a lot, and it's weird. It is. I am still reading all the comics, at least. Like, I've taken time for that because I need it right now. <laughs> so. Yeah. But you're um, going back and reading the old comics. Um, and okay. Another weird shitty news, this Rogue One stuff that yeah, you probably saw. With this. Um, so like the two dudes who wrote Rogue One tweeted some anti-Trump tweets and then had to delete them later. And like, I thought that was super weird. Well, <laughs> the they're Hollywood trying to like reporter. censor all the media is what's happening. It's really, it's concerning that like, I mean, I don't know why, but I'm, ass I'm assuming based on the context that Disney asked them to delete them. Yeah. Because they were like worried. <laughs> and Oh, that's good. Cool. So I like, how, I like reporter, how neither of us can react to this at all. We're like, oh, good. That's cool. I like, mean, what I do you say to this? About it because I was mad. So that was how I reacted to it. But like, so, so the Hollywood reporter interviewed all these market analysts about the tweets because they, they didn't know the official reason. So they were like, they asked around and they were like, why do you think this happened? And all these analysts were like, Disney's probably trying to just make sure that their writers don't say anything too political. And like, I have like a million quotes from people. And I wrote this story where I was like, okay, George Lucas specifically based the empire on Hitler's rise to power. Like Hitler was one of the cited influences on Emperor Palpatine, yeah. along with Napoleon and Caesar. And it just like, it's like crazy to go back and censor that and be like, don't tell anyone that the empire is based on Nazis. Don't like, mention Like it. everyone already knows that. But that's the kind of thing that they're saying. Like in the in the deleted tweets, they were like, the empire's based on white nationalists. And then they had to delete that tweet. And I'm like, that's just a fact. That's not like <laughs> that's like that's like not even like a dig on anyone. It's just like it that's well, I where mean, Star I guess Wars it's came a from. Dig on white nationalists, but I don't really care about alienating those dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I I Fair. don't I don't know. So I was upset by that because I was like Okay, so this is a movie that at the time it wasn't controversial to be against Nazis, but now apparently it is. Like that's a concern. That is a concern, so and I don't want to get into the politics of what's happening. Okay, but like Star here. Wars is so political. Like I know it's, it's like politics out of it. You it, cannot do it. So it here's the problem with our show right now is that like we are really into nerdy stuff and we you're a writer i do a lot of film stuff and we look at all the aspects all this geeky stuff like rogue one and we're like okay so we understand where it's drawn from because there's politics behind everything but we also don't want to talk about politics on our show because well, it's we, like yeah too horrible for us to deal with but now we're like stuck somewhere in, in between we're like well what are we going to talk about and whatnot and this rogue one thing is like one of those things where i'm like i don't even know how to talk about this on the show without getting mad. <laughs> I don't so. either. And so anyway, I wrote this article that was like, you can't take the politics out of Star Wars because it's political. So that's that's the Mary Sue if you want to read it. Um, and that's it. I can I can end it there. I don't have to. <laughs> People fucking well, just know how putting I it, about Putting in a cute little light night, lighthearted note is that somebody is in chat saying that they normally listen to the podcast, but they're on the East Coast visiting families. So they can see us live and they love the show. And thanks for the they are thanking us for the entertainment. Yay! I'm very tired today, so like it's taking me a, more than usual to talk and like form my thoughts this morning. <laughs> but thank you. I feel like, but this is what happens that we do this, and we're like, "Oh, is that show good?" And then we like listen to it, we're like, "We sound fine." <laughs> yeah, but while we do it, we're like in a sleepless fugue stain every week. I mean, it is called insomniacs in the morning. That's whether weird. or not you read that when you like click on the thing. Okay, so um, are there any other news items on here that you want to get to before we talk about Link's Awakening or whatever? Um, I don't need to talk about... Uh, I don't know. Okay, so 
I'll I mentioned that Justice League Dark trailer came out, and it's a uh, an animated movie that's going to feature all like the magic characters of the DC universe, and it, I'm sure it's going to be fine. I just I'm not that interested. I just want to see Zatanna, and that's it. Um, so that's coming out at some point soon, and they released a trailer that you, that you can now go and watch. Um, and uh, the other thing I'm going to mention is that this whole Emerald City thing that I didn't even know was in production is being released soon, and they released like. A trailer for it and it's like game of thrones meets wizard of oz is the only way i could describe it i don't know if you've seen this at all no <laughs> it's like ridiculous and it's, it's like, like a gritty reboot of the wizard of oz it's exactly that but like it's like they're talking they like during game of thrones and like they're talking about like we're at war and like oh they're having gosh. like lawn and then they show fucking like dialogue and then like skins and stuff and i don't like, know what the fuck is lawn. happening that scarecrow is like really hot and also like having sex with dorothy like you know <laughs> once again did they know that wicked already happened like there already is a gritty <laughs> reboot of the wizard of oz and it's wicked but okay we can have well, again, there's one. less singing involved with this but you go watch the trailer because that's the only way i can describe it is that it looks like game of thrones meets wizard of oz which means i'll probably watch it because i feel like it was it i watched it being like oh this is like a parody video like that time they were that trailer was released that was like Zelda meets Game of Thrones, yes, and I was like, yes. ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I would like, watch this, this if it be, was this real. Is, like hilarious if anybody yeah, really made this. But that's what this this is. And I was watching the Emerald City thing and being like, oh, this is gonna be this would be hilarious that I would watch this if it was real. And they're like, no, this is like a legitimate trailer. I'm like, what this is not a parody, like <laughs> that's amazing. So it that's why fun. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna end up watching it because I'm like like everything else that's coming out lately where we're like just creating fan fiction basically and filming it <laughs> that's Which that's the level is what wicked is i mean like jokes aside like the original book yeah like i know clever well anyway, i mean um that, that's all i'm gonna say about that but do you want to talk about either of these two things i know you mentioned carrie fisher sure um i'll say there's a snow piercer tv show and i thought the movie was pretty fun so so i'm on board for that and also carrie fisher was on the late show and she's such a delight and like i always love hearing everything she has to say so if you need to pick me up um just look up that video i i just adore her i mean carrie so, fisher yeah. is just a great pick me up she's, she's great just really amazing so i love anyway, carrie fisher if you need some cheering up i i would recommend looking up that video okay so let's Let's talk throwback. So we want to we want to do the throwback first, and then do reading reading. Yeah, because it, it connects. So the question for today was if you wanted to email us at insomniacsinthemorning at gmail dot com or tell us in the pop up chat. That's fine too. Uh, was your favorite handheld game as a kid? Um, and the only reason why we chose this throwback today, and that it was like she couldn't believe that we never talked I about it before. I cannot believe it. I still cannot believe it. Well, I we've think talked it's to, we've, we've talked about, about other before. Zelda games, but like we talked about Ocarina of Time pretty extensively. But, you know, I was looking at what the Black Friday sales are digitally, and I'm going to pick this up because it's going to be like two or three bucks for the weekend on Nintendo eShop for the 3DS or whatever, um, is Link's Awakening, which was the first handheld Zelda game for mm -hmm. the Game Boy, which is a game that Maddie and I played pretty religiously when we were teenagers talking to each other on the phone. Like, it was Pokemon, Kirby, and Zelda. Mm -hmm. um, Kirby, I don't think we even played that much. I think we just argued about it a lot. We did argue about it. I think I think we had both already beaten Kirby by the time we were friends. I can't remember. Kirby was, we had... The first Kirby game takes like maybe 15 minutes to beat. So it does. But I was playing it when I was a child. So it, I know. it took me longer than that. And then eventually now I could beat it in 15 minutes. But it was like one of the first games I had. Yeah. So anyway, um, Link's Awakening. My main memory of Link's Awakening isn't just talking to you about it, but like the fact that I didn't, I had the internet, but I didn't like constantly have access to it. And so I didn't like call tip lines and I didn't even know what Nintendo power was. So the only way that I knew how to beat anything in Link's Awakening was by talking to people. And my <laughs> cousin, Alex, was really good at games and still is. And so <laughs> he would usually figure something out in Link's Awakening before I did. So like, as far as tip guides go, I basically just had my cousin who was like a little better at noticing things than me. So I would be like struggling in puzzles. And the memories that I have of this game are like literally me just walking around constantly in the game and being like, I don't know what to do next. Because it was so hard for me. Like I was like a kid. So it wasn't I didn't, like a lot of I direction. Don't know you know how to get how to open any of the these temples. I like, know. Like, I don't know how to do this. And there wasn't a way to find out. So you, right. Like, this is not like Skyward Sword, where no. they like had a so fucking tutorial like, every second. So just walk around the game for hours 
like hours I was wasting <laughs> time being like I guess I'll talk to these characters again it was like that's just what playing a game was like which was crazy yeah like, but that's that's, that's what I, I try and do still like everyone's like oh why are you still stuck on this party I'm like I'm like unless I'm playing with a group like I try to not google how to get out of things and like i, mean, it's like, depends I can't play on the game but like for something like an old zelda game like you may as well just like yeah. walk around yeah no i agree with that out. and like that's a lot of what that game was i have a very distinct memory of playing that game like i'd already played through it i think i don't think i ever beat it because like the wind fish was just like a whole bunch of fucking bullshit oh i but, beat like, it and I was so mad. So, okay, I, I like had such an emotional relationship with this game, more so than <laughs> you, I think, because it was like the Game Boy was the first console I had and the only, only console I had for a long time because I just like didn't know anything about game consoles. <laughs> well, your mom I, like, didn't like get them for you. Well, I think she I mean, would that's... if I had asked. But also, I, mean, I don't like, know. I mean, like, I remember that TV wasn't allowed in my house and I had no friends. So I like didn't understand that things existed for a really long time. I was like, this is it, right? This is the only video game and I like didn't know um so I had Link's Awakening and I beat it and stuff but I thought that I was like so upset that the twist ending of that game spoiler alert for a 20 year old game is <laughs> that it is all a dream that is how that game ends. well yeah I was is... like devastated by that I was like what the fuck <laughs> I walked around this game. Lake's Awakening. I like how you didn't see that coming. I know. I know. (laughs) And I I mean, to be fair, there's confusing parts there because there's like that whole part where it's like, oh, if you go to sleep in this bed, you can go into the dream world. Yes. And And I was like, okay, so there's a dream world and there's a real world, but it's all a dream. And the other thing that I didn't understand because this was the first Zelda game I had ever played was all of the characters' names are, like, references to real people Link knows in the other games. Like, Marin and Malin and Tarin and Talon. Like, those names are, like, other characters. You know what I mean? I don't so, know. Like, Wait, but, like, Marin and Tarin came before Malin and Talon, if well, that makes any well, exactly. sense. Exactly. And, like, in Link's Awakening, their names are Malin and Talon or whatever. Oh, my God. And now I'm getting all confused. To, you're supposed to, like, look at those different spellings and be like, oh, he's... These aren't the same characters, but I like didn't get those references at all. Right. I was like, so after, and also Zelda's not in this game. So this was why. As no, a there kid, was some other girl, right? Yeah, it's Malin. And this is why as a kid, I was like, Link and Malin are supposed to be together. They're in love. <laughs> Who's this other Zelda character? Like, what are you talking about? Why is it about? even called Zelda? There's no Zelda in here. Yeah, I think her name's Malin. It might be Marin, though, in that game. I think it's uh, I, Malin's the Ocarina of Time one, so it's probably Marin that you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, it's Marin. Um, yeah, and there was like a lot of weird stuff in that game, too, like with mushrooms and other like drugs, hallucinogens you well, would pick up. He's asleep the whole fucking time. I don't yeah. know. I, anyway, so I, I like. There's like literally a chain chomp game. in there at one point. Is there? I don't remember that. Yeah, you have to pick it up at one point to get to the second dungeon. I remember that you have to, like, you know, find a mermaid statue. Oh, yeah, there's, like, fucking mermaids. Like, water dungeon. And that took me a thousand years to figure (laughs) out because there's no way to figure it out. Like, a lot of the time, like, like I'm saying, like, literally just like going to the right location and talking to somebody. Right. This is like why I didn't like Skyward Sword. And like, I think this is a complaint for a lot of people with Skyward Sword. It's not because the game itself was like boring or like, you know, like all the Zelda games will reimagine Zelda in a creative way. Um, And I've liked all of them. But when like Skyward Sword was like overkill on the tutorials and telling you what you need to know, like Navi, we thought was annoying, but like, Take that and multiply it like I know it was like way worse than that. And it sort of takes away from your experience of the game because it's like, it's like, oh, she's like, oh, what's that over there? What's this over here? Don't forget to move your Wiimote like this. And once when you get to a point where you have to like memorize like 40,000 like controls for like one game, like that's, I mean, like whatever, like I'll do it. But like, it's not like you're enjoying the game. You're just like, what the fuck? Like I have to, which way do you have to move the Wiimote right now? And like, I think the great thing about these games that we play as kids with no tutorials is that like you had to figure out the puzzles by yourself or talk um, to your friends, which is like something that kind which of, is, which is kind of goes back to the beginning of this podcast where we were talking about Mario maker and designing levels that like you sort of screw with each other, but like by figuring out by trial and error, you beat these levels. And like, that's what the links awakening was like. We just, 
didn't know where we were going. We just kept on doing things until <laughs> something would work. Well, I have a very so distinct weird. memory of you not understanding something in the second dungeon. You kept on asking me about it. And I was like, I don't remember. So I rebooted my game and like played all the way up to the second dungeon, which took forever, by the way, because it's not a quick no. deal in that game because like everything is it's I don't know. Like it was actually a pretty difficult game, I think. And like, was I remember the finally time? getting there and calling you. I'm like, okay, so what's the part you had a problem with? You're like, oh, I already beat the dungeon. I'm like, why am I playing this game again? <laughs> That's horrible. Um, I know that something did happen where I accidentally broke my first playthrough of Link's Awakening. Oh, I good. Like, used a small key incorrectly and I, I broke my game. And like, I didn't figure that out for hours. Uh and I just couldn't get the strength bracelet, which is like relatively early on in the game. I think it might be the first dungeon or the second dungeon where you get the strength bracelet and you can move rocks. But I basically made it so that I could never get the strength bracelet no matter what I did. And so I was just playing the game for hours and hours being like, this is so weird. I can't get past any of these things. I don't understand. And like eventually I like showed it to my cousin and he was like, oh, you broke your game so you can't get this item That's that I have. That's crazy, though. Can't you buy, like, a small key somewhere in that game, though? No, like, I the only way that I could fix it was by restarting my entire game, which I did, and getting all the way back there and getting the bracelet the way that I was supposed to get it. I feel like that doesn't make sense, but maybe just, it really did suffer from poor design. I like, I don't know. I, like, I did some weird shit. Like, it is possible to break those games if you do things in the wrong order. It was an old game. That's so true. I like I opened doors in the wrong order the first time I went through the dungeon. I like did a weird order in terms of that and probably lost what happened to is that you I glitched needed. somewhere that you weren't supposed to be and then you used the key there. That's yeah, probably what probably, happened to yeah. you. I mean, like I don't remember how it happened because I'm a ch I was a child then, so I don't remember how I broke my game. But I know that my cousin like tried to fix it for me extensively and was like, "No, there's just no way." to do this like for whatever reason you can't take the key into this room like what the fuck maddie <laughs> so I, mean, I had to restart my entire game so that happened at one point oh my god that's crazy yeah i don't know um anyway, link's awakening great game it was a great I game i think still have good memories of in spite of the fact <laughs> I had multiple bad experiences with it I, I i never beat the wind fish i couldn't figure it out and then i like eventually did look up a tutorial and i was like this is bullshit i did, I did with I my cousin's help i mean my cousin like told me how to beat it and i I've, was like okay. i've been in that place before where i just don't beat the final boss because generally the final boss is ridiculous and like i don't mean just zelda i mean like I'll play a game like all the way to the final boss and be like, I'll try for a really long time to beat it. But like, sometimes it's like the final boss care. shouldn't it should be hard, but it, it shouldn't be so like unbearably hard. And that's something that drives me fucking crazy about a lot of video games is that you spend all this time beating this final boss. And usually you just get like a credit roll or a tiny cut scene. And I'm always like, once when I get to the point where I'm frustrated with the final boss, I'm like, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done. Cause I, there's, there's no payoff afterwards. You know, like you get to say you, played it i guess but yeah or you get to see the cutscene. but nowadays people can just watch that stuff on youtube so it's totally different and that's true too that but is very true you couldn't necessarily do that you'd have to beat the final boss in order to see the final scene that was I the think... only reason i beat the wind fish i was like i want to know what happens and then you were <laughs> devastated yes <laughs> i was really mad all that time for nothing <laughs> um i i think in terms of like other handheld games i played was um I played obviously a lot of Pokemon. I had the red one. As did uh, I. Right. And I had like a that whole was a bunch game of other. I didn't beat the final boss was Pokemon. I never. Yeah. I had like a whole boss. bunch of other Game Boy games too, but Zelda was probably the other one I played the most. Like I had the Mario Lands. Actually, yeah, the Mario Lands. I played a lot of those too. Oh, on Game Boy? Um, I loved those. Yeah. And then I also had a Game Gear. Like, so I really liked the Sonic games on the Game Gear. And that's pretty much, I mean, I had some other games too, but that those were the ones I played the most because they, fucking love sonic the hedgehog no matter how bad the game is um but that's that's a lot of what i did for like nostalgia nostalgically like old games the other thing i was mentioning and posting all over my twitter that i love to talk about are all those fucking tiger games that were like you, you know what i'm talking what? about right no those like little you you definitely had them they would make like an assortment of them like off of everything and they would be like you you just buy them like oh, a, like a yes. plastic yeah, I had a Beauty and the Beast. Exactly, game. it's one of those, and they were terrible. I had Batman Returns, like yeah. they had like Super Mario, like they were all terrible. I yeah, had a ton of those. Great. Did you have um, any other Game Boy games that were just like random games? Like I had Monopoly. 
randomly? Did I'm you sure I that? did. I don't, I mean, I don't even remember. I definitely remember having Batman Returns and like a basketball one. And like, because my grandmother would buy them for me. Because she was like, oh, he likes video games, so I'll get him this these. This is like a video game. You press one button. In the Beauty and the Beast game, it was just like two buttons, but I figured out how to beat it. Somebody was posting on Twitter about that game, and it was like such a flashback for me. I was like, holy I know, shit. I know. I like, honestly, if I Beast found some game. Tiger games that like were at least of a thing I cared about, I might pick them up again just for like the nostalgic value. They're so um, stupid, though. They are stupid, they but like... Nothing happens in them. No, no. I, I just... It's from a different era in terms of gaming. Now, it, I think... It, it's not like equivalent to like mobile apps, but it's like it's just something simple that you can play. Like it's I guess like they didn't really work. So I guess they weren't simple they either. They really didn't work. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to even describe these games. It would be like you'd hit one button like that did like five feet. different functions. Yeah. Or you or like to get past something. It would be like struggle and you'd like hit the struggle button for like a, an hour. And then finally it would be like you won. And I'd be like. <laughs> God, I, my thumb hurts so bad, but I got it. Mario get Party all over again. It was like that. It was they weren't really games. It was just kind of like a dice roll as to whether it would go to the next scene or not. It was kind of <laughs> like um, oh, what's that stupid game, Dragon's Lair or whatever, where it's just like a series of scenes and you'd like press a button obsessively in order to get to the next thing. But it was like more like a DVD menu than a yeah. game. Oh. They were kind of like that. Wow, that's like the perfect way to describe that. The Tiger <laughs> Games were like a DVD menu, but a video game. Yes, that's Holy basically shit. what they were. It's just <laughs> that it would be really hard to get to the next menu. Holy crap. All right, let's do some reader mail because like we're, we're, we're talking. I, I, this is my fault. I br brought us into the world of Tiger again, but <laughs> which sorry. we didn't really need to revisit, but I, I really wanted to. Um, uh, so we have an email from Taylor that says 90s confusion. Hi, Maddie and Ryan. Hope you all had a great, good Thanksgiving. What 90s craze will be the hardest to, to explain in 20 years? My vote is for the Macarena. <laughs> that I mean, is I guess... already so hard to explain to people now. Okay, so... but like the other, it was like the Macarena and the Cotton Eye Joe. Like those were the two things that everyone did in the 90s for How some reason. Like five years later, though, right? Or two years later? It was a little bit later. Cotton Eye Joe? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know what would be the bracelets? it's slap bracelets. Uh, I, I feel like that's not hard to understand because whenever our, I've introduced They're so this, cool. Like, <laughs> no, I like exactly like I know some people like, you know, through family or whatever. And like they'd be like in their teens or like, you know, Carla's kids are like 13 and 12 or whatever. And like Do they like slap bracelets. Well, yeah. But like once when I told them what it was, I'm like, oh, it's a thing. I just slap and it goes around the wrist. It's like, cool. So that's actually not like a hard thing to explain. And also like kids are still into that if they came back. So kids are still into hitting themselves violently in the arm with a ruler that then turns <laughs> into a bracelet. OK, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Pogs is probably the thing that would be the hardest to explain because I still can't explain it. Pogs are fucking bizarre. Pogs. I, okay, fun fact. I use Pogs as a form of currency in Gino because I think it's hilarious. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> but yes. like, I never understood how to play the fucking game. Like, no was it does. a game or is it just like, you literally collected things that slammed them down as hard as you could go? Like, that's my understanding. Well, there was sort of like a betting system with Pogs, I think, where you could lose all of your Pogs, but no one ever wanted to do it because everybody in elementary school didn't want to lose their Pogs. Yeah, because also, they weren't easy to come by either. No. Like, You had to like convince your parents to buy you a bunch of little circles of cardboard, which no one's parents wanted to buy. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody really Really wanted. Were like, what the fuck is this? Like, I'm not buying you this trash. Like, exactly. So, oh like, my god. My grandma would buy me pogs because my grandma was always like very understanding about absurd trends. So she would buy us pogs and slap bracelets and beanie babies, which are equally inexplicable. <sighs> beanie babies, I can at least understand from a collector's position because, like, I think yeah, you could explain it that way. But like, there's a period of time where everybody wanted these like stuffed animal beanie babies like and people will be like oh like action figures like yeah. it's that type of deal like i can't there's the thing with pogs is that, like it was something that we lived through and like cannot re-explain what it even was like at I least mean, you can explain what a beanie baby idea, is where like they were pogs were just a collector's item like if you think about it that way it kind of makes sense like there were just different pogs for different franchises that you were into yeah i mean and cards. listen to me like i i watch that youtube channel which is 80s commercials and just it's like all 80s and 90s commercials and so i remember a lot of these things when it comes up on the commercial reel and i'll be like oh i had that that was weird like there was like all sorts of shit like met like uh jess and i do retrospectives and sometimes we do commercial reels like there's like fucking like dolls like cupcake dolls that smelled like cupcakes and it's like 
who Gross. what like so i mean there were like a lot of weird things in the 90s but i think pogs was like the biggest thing because everybody wanted them mm-hmm. and like you know like it was just like a like it's like it's like even like you know how hacky sacks were big for a while too oh but like at least you can God. explain what the fuck that is too like you can be like can oh it's a game you that you played can you because it, hacky sacks were stupid th- I'm you're right you're out against them now no 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 i know but like you can explain to other people it's like oh it's a game where you kick these back and forth nobody can explain pogs people in the chat right now are going i can't explain pogs like they're like in here in the chat being like i don't know what that does either I, okay, I like what Ewan wrote. Yeah, Pogs I and Warhammer too. were like the two things I wasted my parents' money on as a kid. <laughs> Ian also says the worst thing about Pogs was that 98% of them weren't even pictures of anything you cared about, That's which true. is 100% true. One of my slammers had a picture of a tropical fish on it. Okay, I didn't so, even like fish. So I was fun like, I fact. Don't know why I have this. And we're going to get off this topic in a second, but fun fact, um, in Demon, which we posted, there's like this, the whole movie revolves around them chasing after a chip. The chip was a slammer pog. It's a pog. It was like, it was like, it was like a little pog with the dice that were on fire. Yep. So. That happened. That's what that is. So I reference Pogs all the time in all my writing for some reason. I actually purposefully reference Pogs as well. Like one time years ago, I went to a game convention here in Boston called Game Loop, which is like a serious game developers convention. Oh, and yeah. like as a joke, I started bringing up Pogs with people there when they asked me like what my favorite game was. And like everybody would think it was hilarious. So we like started a meme at the convention where everybody was like bringing up Pogs in conversations and being like really good gameplay design on Pogs. And it was like... <laughs> A meme that I invented solely at this one event. It was like five years ago. I mean, that's and worth it. I thought it. it was pretty funny. And I think it is pretty funny, funny now. Too. And I, I think bugs have no game design. There's they don't. There's do like that. I, I don't understand. Like even now, like even with like trolls, which they've reinvented by the way for right now. It's like trolls were like, oh, you can get the trolls that like you. Trolls. They're just a, they're just a fucking doll with long hair that you could style, or they have like the wish gem or whatever. But like again, it was a toy. So like you're like, oh, everybody had like a troll and they collected them because they were toys. Okay. nobody knows what the fuck a pog was nobody still knows what a pog was so that's why pogs are the greatest handheld game ever made that's true <laughs> okay uh and then we have from i don't know if it's pronounced goose or gus but they wrote in um hi maddie and ryan first up thanks for hosting a really entertaining show that's always worth watching uh my favorite handheld game has got to be pokemon red and blue uh, i'm all about red uh, first time I saw that game was when a classmate smuggled it and his original Game Boy into primary school. Me and, my, me and another friend sneakily watched him play it for days. Luckily, our teacher never noticed us ever be, ever so slightly distracted. I only got my own copy a couple of years ago when the Game Boy Color game came out, and I promptly lost it weeks to it. Again, thanks for the show and keep up the good work. Um, yeah, I played a lot of Pokemon Red as well. I don't think I, I think I you know what? I'm pretty sure I brought mine to high school, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't know if I ever did that. I did, but I don't think I played it during class. I think I skipped class. I mean, I mean like, I think it's the worst thing. I think I skipped class and went to, like, the back hall and played it by myself. Yeah, but that's I probably mean, the thing that happened. I don't think I ever actually brought my Game Boy with me to school. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I figured that one out, like, when I was in high school and it was too late. Like, you know, because, like... I'm pretty sure Pokemon Red came out when I was in middle school. So, like, I went Hello. through and played it again. <laughs> it was also a weird period of time when people played games on graphing calculators. Yeah, but this Pokemon was not that, one of them. No, but they, you could Zelda play was. other games. Yeah. And, like, that happened. I, I had games on my graphing calculator eventually. Um, exactly. But also, I would just, like, play with my graphing calculator like a huge fucking nerd. I would just I also... graph graphs on there. Oh, I mean, I, cool I never did that. I, I like download a bunch of games and then lost the fucking calculator. That was that was my story. But like, do kids still do that? Do they still play games on their graphing calculators? They don't need them because they have computer. OK, so they have kids. Phones. God, they have phones. No, no, Why no. But I they're not allowed to use the phones. What it is now is that everybody gets like a hundred dollar like Chromebook when they go to school now. Oh. A lot of schools that they give the do they give people like the Shitty, the laptops the shittiest possible Chromebook that can run like one program at a time. Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, so that's probably what they do now. Uh, I could be wrong about this, but I know a lot of people that are in, or like I know a lot of 
friends that have kids in school that are at that level now and they say oh they they get the laptops but there are probably some places that don't do that because i'm assuming not every school can oh, own can afford it of course yeah not. considering like how terrible our education system is right now in terms of funding like i can't believe that everybody's yeah, getting I, a chromebook right now chromebooks are gonna go away pretty quick but whatever. yeah Let's not who knows that topic. who knows i don't know what it's like in school anymore I didn't know like no, what it was there. like when I was there because I didn't go to class. When we so. were there, we would bring our Game Boys to school and or play on our graphing calculators. Or I play with a Tamagotchi. Yeah. Oh, God. Tamagotchi. There's another weird thing that you could try and explain. All right, we got too many emails and then we got to go. Um, James sent a, re a recipe. Um, I think he sent it for me because like I wrote on his Instagram. Um, he was like, he was, a, he was making this crazy. I can't, I'm not going to read all this right now because it's like intense, but like he sent like, this like really what i don't know what it's called i'm trying to see it's like a type of christmas cookie and like i saw them on instagram i was like that looks really fucking good i want to eat that so i'm i'm going to post it into the description after we're done with this because like there's like literally like 500 ingredients and then there's like optional ingredients <laughs> okay we can yeah it'll be in it'll be in the description for the the show yeah, I'm pretty sure he sent it because like I just wanted it. <laughs> and then now you're looking at it and you're like, it's too hard. <laughs> no, I mean I could do it, but like I'm just gonna have you do it. Okay, <laughs> you're like, thanks. I would do it. Um oh god. So Sky came back and wrote a joke, Yay. but I don't think I'm gonna pronounce this any like correctly at all. Um send it to me. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in this chat for you. Cause like my presentation of Sky's jokes are always awful like i know she looks forward to me botching her jokes but we're not gonna do that right now it's it's in the chat and you're gonna laugh <laughs> <laughs> i actually saw sky post this joke i think on her facebook and i thought to myself why didn't sky send this into our show really <laughs> well apparently she figured that, that out did. okay <laughs> what did the turkey say about three trump appointees go i don't know what doubles <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce Goebbels' name. I'm going to go with that. I, I don't know. I probably, or unless it's just so, like literally Goebbels, but. This is a joke about Nazis, folks, because Goebbels was uh, a, one of the, one of Hitler's, you know, helpers at the time. Oh, his little assistants, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what that joke means. <laughs> Dark. Yeah, anyway. well, you know, it is Sky. <laughs> no, it's a very clever joke. Also, you know, turkeys say gobble, so it sounds Yeah, cool. I know. I know what a turkey does. Anyway. Turkey's good. Did Sky send us a recipe or did, did you? No, I just sent a, 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 a joke in and James sent us a recipe, which I'm going to post for his delicious cookies because I can't read all that right now. And also, like, we need to end the show. We do. <laughs> so do you not have a food thing that you want to share before we go? Um, We could do something Thanksgiving related. I'm trying to think about... Oh, actually, no, we could do a Christmas cookie type of thing and be like, what's your favorite Christmas cookie to make? Uh, uh, we could do that next week. I don't okay, that's right. Oh, by the way, we're going to do a Christmas special episode, which is not going to be relevant to anything. We're just going to talk about Christmas specials. Yeah, we're uh, we don't know when that's going to be, so but, you know, week, it's coming someday. That. That's going to happen. We've already started planning it. There's like 60 Christmas specials we want to talk well, about. Well, she wanted to do a throwback on one, but then we came up with like 50 more. Um I think we should just do Christmas specials every week from now on. So people there's can too many. If they That's why to do that. That's why though, because I don't think we can fit them in one show. But whatever, we'll argue about that later. Okay, fine. In the um, meantime, uh, I made an apple raspberry pie for dessert for my family, and I think I talked about this on the show before. But basically, it's just an apple pie, except you crush up some raspberries and and toss the apples in the raspberry goo ahead of time, and then you put in all the rest of the apple pie spices. And it's really good, and it's like really gooey and yummy, and the raspberries add like some extra flavor to things, and they make the inside of the pie pink, and lo so it looks really pretty. That sounds delicious. It's I really, made really, uh, really, I made my pasta salad, which I didn't put in all the ingredients this time because I forgot them. I was sort of like in a rush because I did this on Wednesday when the grocery stores were crazy. Uh, so this was just like a like a huge pasta salad of like. Italian seasonings with pepper and uh, green and red peppers and uh, carrots and Italian dressing. But usually I throw in um, like, a, you know, celery, uh, olives and onion. And I just forgot to get those things. <laughs> but everyone liked it. Oh, I threw in a ton of mozzarella, too. So that's probably what they really liked. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's always so. a good way to spruce up a pasta salad. Oh, and tomato. That's usually something. I just like, I really like, I got all stuff and I was like, I and then I was like cutting it up and in the long run, I was, I was glad that I didn't get everything because I like spent like two hours cutting all the vegetables I did have and I was like, oh God, if I had all the other ones, I'd be here for like at least another hour fucking cutting like tomatoes and onions. So, um, but yeah, that's usually what I do is I do a big mash of pasta salad and you can do it like on the cheap too because it's just like vegetables and pasta and pasta costs like nothing. So, and I make a good fucking pasta salad because I'm Italian and I know how to do anything with pasta. The end. Mamma mia. It's a me. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On that note, we do have to go. We did we it. Do. We did all of our segments. Yeah. No, we're having a late start to our day here, but you know, whatever. Now what else I is have new? To go work. Bye. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching the show. You can subscribe okay. to it on uh, here on YouTube, but our main YouTube channel is actually Atomic Blue Productions, mm -hmm. which is you can go there and you can follow Atomic Blue Productions on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus if you even use that. Um, yeah, so but just go to atomicblueproductions.com and you'll find all those links. And you'll also find a audio only version of this show, which is on iTunes as well, if that's something you're into. And yep. if yeah. you like podcasts, which I think a lot of people actually have been listening to that over the live stream lately, just because I think it's easier probably. But it is. I mean, if you're not here when we happen to do the show, then it's you can listen to it whenever you want. Yep. And um, you can watch our sci fi series. You over can. on atomic blue productions if you haven't already <laughs> so there's that too we made some bloop we made a blooper reel for that we made a video of me and ryan reading a really old gino story that i wrote when i was a kid yep um so you can enjoy that you can watch demon which is the movie that we made when we were kids that has a pog in it and you can that's <laughs> <enjoy laughs> like a critical point of the movie like <laughs> we have a patreon yeah, we have all sorts of stuff so and also you can always email us at insomniacs in the morning at gmail.com and we'll read your emails on air and if we can't like if a recipe is just like really long we'll post it in the notes afterwards so you can you guys can go enjoy the recipe as well cool all right that's we did it. it i think we're done thank okay. you for watching everyone uh good luck shopping if you're going outside today don't die wear a tactical vest bring a machete with you and you'll be fine don't do don't bring a machete bring a machete don't listen to Maddie. don't bring a machete <laughs> <laughs> all right goodbye everyone <laughs> bye <laughs>